So those pickups were swapped out for the American uh, Custom Shop pickups. And this is the self-adjusting radius gauge to be able to get a match to that fingerboard. So that original plastic nut was removed and replaced with a bone nut. Jack, I have mentioned this in the past that, you know, for bass guitars, with the mass of the string and the minimum amount of displacement when you fret, I really don't bother to compensate a nuts on basses. But I'm going to do the tuning test and you can have a look at just how accurate this is tuning now. Right, I've tucked that self-adjusting radius gauge away in the custom 60s snapshot case. No, same idea as a guitar. Open string, 12th fret, 7th fret, and octave, and 1st fret. A string, 12th fret, and 1st fret. Finally, the G. Octave. Seventh. Octave. Open. And first fret. There you go. And that's why I never bother with a compensated nut on bass guitars. New pickups are installed. The bone nut is done. Strings are matched to the radius of the fingerboard perfectly. The truss rod is loaded, but we still have this trouble area right up the top here. So what you see there, and this doesn't show up until the base is under full string load. So that top end, that big square block that bolts into the body, it is sitting proud in relation to the lay of the neck, the rest of the neck. Truss rod works perfectly fine. I just want to show you how I take care of this. So I have a single cut mill file, the same mill file that I mount on the blocks that I send out. But of course this is not mounted on a block. And we have a riser there in the way of a hockey puck to allow me enough room to slip underneath the strings and take care of that top end. So here we go. So I'm starting in the middle of the crown and then making my way towards the outside edge, moving obliquely. If you move straight and push down, the file will leave a swath in the crown of the frets. And this is why you always see me move. I'm moving along the string path, but I'm moving obliquely so that we don't leave that footprint with the file. And again, you know, this didn't show up. When you take the string load off and you eye the neck, straight edge or not, it looks perfect, but... This needs to be addressed. This will allow him to drop the strings even closer. Start with our 400 and take care of those tooling marks in the file. Pieces of 400 grit. This is our 12. At this point we're going to switch over and finish up that edge dress before we buff. Just before we get that buffer out to uh, buff those upper frets that we just leveled, crowned and polished, I'm doing this edge dress first. 
so that when we do buff, we'll buff out the entire job. Doesn't need a lot, but the thing is, we've just been through a very humid summer, and so if they're sticking out already, by the time the heating season is in full swing by mid February, March, these will be as sharp as razor blades. So we're getting them now, so that. They're not a problem later. That's going to do it. Now, with our cloth back 400 grit sandpaper, I'm going with that kind of clockwise and then counterclockwise and then straight along. And that will soften that edge and take care of any potential barbs in the future. Same thing again this side. Doing kind of counterclockwise as far up as I can go. Pretty well go all the way up on the treble side. And then counterclockwise. And then we just go straight along full length. You can see why you need the, uh, you really need the cloth back paper for this because your regular sandpaper will just get shredded. Okay, following that up with 600 grit. Same thing counterclockwise. And then clockwise. Move that along. And then and then straight along full length. So we're just getting ready to buff. I'm doing this edge dress before we buff so that we only need to buff once. This side, same thing. We've got a clockwise counterclockwise and then straight through. This is a 600 grit. Shift that around. Get this top. Okay, that feels good. Now we're ready to buff. We're good from the 11th thread up.
So all I really did with this portion of the fingerboard was to edge dress and buff it out. So I'm just doing final buff with the Meguiar's Ultimate Compound slash Polish. I'm going to do a little bit better than that factory finish, so I'm going over with the emery cloth, just side to side with the scrub block. And then I'll go over it again and buff it up. This will take out any grittiness. If we come this far, I figure I may as well go full hog. Good. I give that a quick buff. Okay, so now we're completely in the driver's seat. The action was actually pretty good right where it was even before I did this, but now if the customer so chooses, you could have it even closer because we were getting a bit of rattling at that top end, but it's all taken care of now. In order to get the maximum amount of height adjustment, we're going to need to pad this cavity. This is what came with the original pickups. So here's what I'm doing. I'm just putting that piece on top just to give us a little bit more resistance. Just that little bit of extra padding is going to allow us to put this pickup anywhere we want it. And we'll determine this final height once the uh, strings are back on and tuned up to concert. This pickup wasn't quite as bad, but it still needed a little extra help. So I'm going to put a piece in here as well. And we'll get all of the height adjustment we'll ever need. Okay, so same deal here. We have the original padding, and I'm just adding a little bit more. To what we already had. And that should give us what we need. These wood screws only give you about two rotations of adjustment. So this is our self-adjusting radius gauge. So when this thing is set up perfectly, no matter how lightly you touch each string, you'll see it move. Now what I do when I go to set it up, is the two outside strings I adjust to the height that I want. Now this goes for guitar or bass, this just happens to be bass. The two middle strings I raise right up out of the way and then I drop them down until they just kiss that radius gauge. Now we know we've got a perfect match and I'll just leave that in the case for the customer. No more guessing games. Perfect match every time. Now that we've matched that radius to the fingerboard and we have the height adjustment, intonation, everything's done. The very last thing I'm doing is I'm adjusting the pickup height. It's the closest the string will ever get to the pickup when you play the very last note on the bass. That's as close as it's going to get. So let's have a look along the length of the fingerboard. This is the view along the length of the fingerboard looking up towards the bridge. And when I have a new customer, I tend to set up the guitar or bass as close as it can be set up without buzzing issues. And that's kind of what I've done here. You can always raise the action, that's not an issue. So the truss rod, lay of the neck, that fret dress took care of that top end. We've now got this bass playing super slick. And the distance here from the top of the crown to the underside diameter of the low E is three millimeters. And the distance here from the top of the first fret to the underside of the low E string, just a shade over a millimeter. So I'm playing the last fret on that bass string, and that's as close as the string will ever come to the pickups. And that distance, it's three millimeters, and here, the distance from the underside diameter to the magnets is three millimeters. So three, 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 the distance from the crown to the underside of the low string was three millimeters. This was two millimeters. So I do kind of a three-way check when I finish up a bass to verify everything's lined up. 
First thing is my sort of intonation check. I play a series of chords. And that full length progression is... And then the other thing I do, again, this is sort of check the action and playability, is just do a little bit of slapping, some pickups around for this. I like to do is just I do a simple walking line and that one I'll just bring the tone down a little more slap in here mm -hmm. 